Good evening. I'm John Bailey. This is People to be Heard, the program where people who have something to say have their say. Tonight, we've got Dr. Sharon McLennan Weir, Director, Disability Services, Berkeley College of White Plains. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Thank you. Yes. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me on. Right. Dr. McLennan Weir is a certified rehabilitation counselor and a New York State licensed mental health counselor. She received her PhD degree from Seton Hall in counseling psychology in 2012, U.S. Law and Methodology from NYU in 2003, MS degree, Hunter College, CUNY in 1998, and BS from Syracuse in 1993. Dr. McLennan Weir, before coming to Berkeley, was most recently District Manager of the New York State Commission for the Blind, Harlem District Office, previously on rehabilitation counseling positions at three leading organizations and mental health for more than 23 years. All right. mm -hmm. She is dedicated to providing training and presentations regarding psychological topics associated with the aspect of disability. Mm -hmm. She has presented before the American Psychological Association. She taught as adjunct professor of psychology at Concordia, Iona, LIU, and Seton Hall. Her research interests are in the areas of sexuality and disability, publishing articles and book chapters in that field. She has her own mental health practice to work with the clients with physical, sensory, intellectual, emotional, behavioral, medical, and psychiatric disabilities. Dr. McLennan Ware is here because she recently participated mm -hmm. in the Rev Up Westchester event at Playland to register physically disabled voters. And there's a picture of it with uh, County Executive George Latimer. And Dr. Rib Weir is second from the left. So tell me about this event. Yeah, so Rev Up Westchester is an organization where we have advocates in disability, as well as um, different organizations like Berkeley College, participating in trying to get people with disabilities to vote. Essentially, we're trying to register as many people um, with and without disabilities to get their, their, get, get their voice out, to get them heard, and make the difference in um, our elections. Mm -hmm. And how did the event go? The event went well. I mean, we were able to register some people. Um, we did talk to a lot of participants that were already registered, so that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of families and um, children, parents were out enjoying the day. But the most important thing is to keep in mind the reason we had the event mm -hmm. was to celebrate the 29th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act that was signed in by President Bush back mm -hmm. in 1990. So in addition to understanding the importance to vote, we also have to uh, appreciate um, where people with disabilities have come in a sense of trying to not necessarily equal the playing field, but at least get some more um, services and more um, access within our society. Yeah. Could you tell us about the experience of persons like yourself with physical disabilities who have been blind six, since six years of age? And what was your experience at the polls before Americans with the Disabilities Act was passed? Yeah, so my earliest experience voting was back in 1992. I remember clearly being a young um, college student at Syracuse University, and essentially there, there was no per, per se access to the vote. I remember a classmate um, was on the line with me and basically said, do you want me to go into the booth with you and mm -hmm. I will read you the candidates and help you um, select the ballot. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking at the time that I hope he chose who I wanted to select, um, mm -hmm. but there really wasn't a level of independence or mm -hmm. the complete awareness of did I actually vote correctly because mm -hmm. I was depending on someone else. I see. Now, today, does a blind person have a uh, like Braille or a uh, certain type of way you vote? Well, as of 2008, because of the Help Americans um, Act that was passed for voting, 
Um, New York State has adopted um, assistance for people with disabilities to vote. So there are ballot marking devices um, mm -hmm. within every district. Mm -hmm. um, some districts, unfortunately, because of whatever reasoning, could be funding, it could be access issues, um, opt not to have these type of devices install, but eventually they will be. And what mm -hmm. these devices do, they enable a person that has a learning disability mm -hmm. or that's totally blind, or even have a physical disability, um, the option to vote independently. So you can use um, braille markings. You, you also have a choice of using automation where the, the ballot device will talk to you and you can hear the names of the candidates. Also, if you have a physical disability, you can use a sif and puff um, device that will allow you to uh, mark your ballot independently. I never knew that. And uh, do you feel blind persons are aware of this? Well, that is what the Rev Up campaign mm -hmm. is trying to do. We're trying to get the word out that you need to register to vote, but also that there are accessible machines that are available in every district. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is to understand where, you're, where you live, and you should be able to ask um, if, if that polling station near your home has this type of device. If it does not have this type of device, you can elect to submit an application to go to another district to vote, mm -hmm. or you can submit an absentee ballot. Mm -hmm. I see. What did your first vote mean to you? My first vote meant independence for me, especially mm -hmm. since it was 1992, ADA was just passed. Um, I had a lot of hopes and dreams that as a, a woman with a disability, I would be able to have access to full education and also gain full employment. Unfortunately, um, there's over 50 million um, people in the United States that have a documented disability, but one of the things to keep in mind is that mm -hmm. those individuals who are of working age are also underemployed or, un or not employed at all. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important for people to understand what the vote means. That means that you will get someone within um, the Congress to really pass legislation that can provide equal access mm -hmm. of employment to all individuals. Yeah. When did this situation of poll accessibility for the physically disabled begin to be addressed? Well, it's always been, a, it's always been an issue. Um, mm -hmm. Once ADA passed in 1990, we had to really understand what were the limitations within our environment that affected people with disabilities. Essentially, we talked about transportation, we looked at environmental barriers, um, installation of curb cuts, or even um, ha handicapped parking access. Um, we talk about accessible restrooms, but we, we really need to think about polling. So when you think of public access, it's all, it's all things. And one of the most important things for a person with a disability is to be able to earn a wage so you can be a taxpayer, but also your vote really matters in how those tax dollars are being um, distributed. Mm -hmm. When can, uh, are there transport services or, is, or, or are the reach outs in place now available to where the physically disabled live for the physically disabled to get to the polls as mm -hmm. well as into their polling place. Well, yes, but let me just say, yeah. um, John, that yeah. it's very important for your viewers mm -hmm. to understand that people with disabilities want to be recognized as people, okay? Mm -hmm. So we must really look at person first language and, and recognize that they're not physically disabled, they're a person with a disability. So yes, there is transportation available through paratransit services. So here in Westchester County, because of the ADA, um, every county offers that service for someone that has uh, a disability and is not you know eligible for the service. Mm -hmm. So they can take paratransit services to um, the polling stations or they can elect to take um, other types of uh, public transportation via bus or Uber or Lyft. Right. Uh, if they want information on that, whom should they call? Or? Um, well, they can look up online for the Westchester County Gov um, uh, 
excuse me, email address and essentially on their website there's information on paratransit services, also the New York State Vocational Rehabilitation Agency, Access VR. Uh, it's a great advocate for people with disabilities if they need resources and employment assistance. There's also the New York State Commission for the Blind that works specifically with individuals that have um, blindness or visual impairment. Mm -hmm. um, is there an effort to, to bring voters to the early voting locations that will be available this fall beginning October 26th? So what we're trying to do with the rev up of, of uh, Westchester mm -hmm. is that we're trying to really engage a lot of local colleges and universities within Westchester County because a lot of our college students are our new voters, mm -hmm. okay? So they really need to understand how their vote really matters. Mm -hmm. And we have different um, sign-up campaigns throughout Westchester County. Um, and we really are trying to get college um, directors of disability services offices involved. So anyone listening today, um, please contact me because we're really trying to get directors to kind of encourage their students on their campuses to register, but also to network with other colleges and universities to, to get the word out. And your Berkeley College number is? My Berkeley College number is 914-694-1122, and I'm an extension 3169. Right, so we'll hopefully we'll have a slide of that. Up. And are there continuing efforts to, to the Board of to, uh, to bring physically disabled voters to the Board of Elections to register to vote? before October 11th, which is the deadline for registration. We are doing as much as we can through RevUp as well as mm -hmm. the Westchester Disability on the Move. That organization is the Westchester County um, Independent Living Center, and they are a, you know, a very important organization here in Westchester to get all people with all different types of disabilities registered and also aware of services. So yes, between um, Disability on the Move and the Rev Up and all that we can do with college students, we're gonna try to get as many people with disabilities to the polls. And again, a number to call for information on that? For disability for, on the move. For registering. For registering. Before well, you can call. B, you can call me at Berkeley College, and I can forward more information. Yes, October 11th is the deadline for registering um, to vote in the fall election. Now, um, as director of disability services at Berkeley College, what does Berkeley Berkeley do to make education accessible? Well, we do a lot. Yeah. Um, the great thing is that Berkeley recognized that everyone should have access to education, especially if you're a qualified student. So if you're a qualified student with a disability, um, you should be able to get as, as many services based on your documented disability. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we have at Berkeley College that we offer, assistive technology is really the key way right now in trying to bridge the gap between w living w with an able-bodied society versus someone with a disability. So we have different technology programs like screen reading devices, we have magnification devices, we have um, software like Kurzweil 3000, that if someone has a learning disability or print disability, they will be able to get textbooks read to them and also break down various diff content areas um, within the text that they're reading. We also try to implement a universal design within the classroom at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. So our faculty are very much aware and trained about people with all different types of learning styles in the classroom and are working really hard with our office to kind of gear their instruction to, to capture all the, all the um, senses when you're doing instruction, rather just, just the visual. Mm -hmm. um, is there a, a interestingly a higher percentage of disability students at Berkeley's campuses as opposed to other schools in the area? Well, um, Berkeley College has this, the, the, the same national average of people with disabilities. Yes. The national average is about 12% of the 12%. population of, high, of higher education mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. have disabilities, and Berkeley College has about the same, about 12%. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, this is on both campuses, White Plains and your, your New Jersey campus? Yes, we have uh, seven, seven physical campuses without, in the state of New York and New Jersey, ah. and we also have an online program as well. And th all of those campuses together has about 12% in total of students that have disabilities. Yes. But you uh, became blind at uh, age six, I understand, from your husband. And uh, could, could you explain how, I mean, I can't, don't see how anyone can, uh -huh. but could you background us on how it affected you, having seen and now Right. Well, yes, my visual disability began at age six. Yes. Uh, I remember being in second grade learning um, m math uh, problems, times tables, and, and then all of a sudden things went dark. Um, I acquired um, chronic uveitis, and essentially um, it took chunks of my vision away. Um, and by the time I was about 20, 21, mm -hmm. um, I lost all my vision. Mm -hmm. So as a child growing up, um, I, I didn't have reliable vision. I saw a lot of shadows and light perception. So I had to learn as someone who could not see in the sense of um, classroom instruction. So I really learned how to listen and, and work my memory to um, retain mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> right. And mm -hmm. when you were in college mm -hmm. and all your academic uh, progress since then mm -hmm. that you were adjusting right to, to adjusting to being able to do that yes so um, yeah the one of the things to understand about acquiring a disability is that there's a lot of psychological implications because mm -hmm. of the stigma and societal um, barriers so yes as a, as a no, college it's not a stigma it's a mark <laughs> of it's courage. a word it's a mark of courage, right. You're, you're correct, but going through it, you want to be like everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're kind of um, learning that you're not, and, and how are you going to fit in when you can't see? So essentially, I had to learn how to do things um, as a non-visual person. Mm -hmm. um, now. What should our viewers understand about living in an accessible and inclusive environment as well as dealing with non-accessible and non-inclusive environments? Ballparks come to mind. Yes. Yeah, well, Public places come to mind. Yes. Um, I'm happy to say, as of 2019, things are a lot better than mm -hmm. it was. Um, are we... Uh, totally um, accessible no we have some ways to go but we should talk about the appreciations of what ADA has done in the sense that um, there's a lot of assistive technology and automation um, you are able to go to a game and um, I like to see a, a, a point where you can have a little earpiece in your ear and actually hear the descriptions of the games. Mm -hmm. They do have that for a lot of, if you go into the theater, mm -hmm. um, if you go into the museums, um, a blind person can enjoy art and paintings just like anybody else mm -hmm. um, with description. And there's a lot more opportunities to feel tactile art. So yeah, there, there's been a lot of improvements, but like I said, it takes, it takes time to, to, to get it totally inclusive. Yeah. How is a person with your disability particularly mm -hmm. taught to handle that? You just can't make it up by yourself. What kind right. of training did you have? Mm -hmm. So the New York State Commission for the Blind is, is, is a great agency to start with. Um, Again, could you have the name of that organization? Yes. Yeah, so the New York State Commission for the Blind Mm -hmm. um, it's a great organization that is a state-run organization, mm -hmm. it's federally funded, and they have a lot of adaptive services for people who are blind and visually impaired to learn, like for example, rehabilitation teaching, which helps someone learn how to dress, color match, um, helps you with cooking, organizing your home, mm -hmm. helps you learn how to clean. Also, they do a lot of training on assistive technology, so you can learn how to use JAWS for Windows, which is the screen reader that I use, so you can use the computer without um, using a mouse. Essentially, you learn keystrokes. They also teach you how to travel independently through the streets of New York and buses and trains by using orientation mobility instruction or eventually going to um, uh, 
guide dog school if, if you prefer to use a, si a sighted guide um, as a service animal. And they orient towards children who have a sight impairment. Right? Yes, so um, the Commission for the Blind works with someone as early as one years old to, to 99. So they have services for the full lifespans. Um, they partner with a lot of um, agencies within the blind field like Helen Keller or um, Lighthouse Guild um, or Visions. And those are some private nonprofit agencies that specifically work for people that are blind and visually impaired. Mm -hmm. And. Um, how does dealing with disability affect people who do not have disabilities? Mm -hmm. Are there efforts being made to change these attitudes? Yes, um, so that's my, um, yeah. that's my vision. Um, mm -hmm. I feel as a counseling psychologist, that's my role. Um, I know at Berkeley, um, one of the things that I was hired to do was to kind of um, educate the, the culture at Berkeley College um, to let them know that, you know, there's a lot of us that have disabilities. It's like sometimes you may not see them because they're hidden, but eventually a disability may affect anyone. It's, it's the kind of thing that it does not discriminate um, anyone can acquire a disability. I would like to think that we're all temporarily able-bodied. So what we do at Berkeley is that we have a lot of different disability awareness events where we bring in presenters and we do a lot of training and we do a lot of awareness um, so that people understand the implications of disability but also understand that you can still be a, a great success despite having a disability. Uh, does Berkeley make these kind of presentations uh, available outside of the campuses and to organizations and public schools, for example? Yes, yeah, so all of our events are free to the public. Um, mm -hmm. we, we're having an event this October 23rd. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it spotlights National Disability Employment Awareness Month, mm -hmm. as well as the B Domestic Violence Awareness Month as well uh, for sexual trauma for women. Um, we have speakers coming in to talk about how their disability or their sexual trauma has impacted their employment and how they have um, basically, it's called the road to resilience, um, how the impact of diversity has really made these women resilient in, in their everyday life from um, their work to family and recreational. Uh, are men who are who have sight impaired um, less less willing to um, participate in this in training? Um, well, that's just an off the wall question. Okay, but, but so I know men. You know. Yes. I well, the, the reason I mean, yeah. we usually have awareness events that includes men and women, mm -hmm. but this year I wanted to do something a little different, you know, just mm -hmm. to keep it fresh, you know. So because I um, wanted to spotlight women and sexual trauma. Um, that's why we're specifically having that type of event this year. Mm -hmm. But men are welcome to come. Um, mm -hmm. We we're you know we're like I said, it's free to the public. Everyone is welcome to experience it. And again, um, all genders can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is Berkeley planning some new um, initiatives in the disability field in the future? Well, um, I, uh, my goal is to always work with community-based agencies as well as other colleges um, to make sure that we stay current and fresh. So what Berkeley does is that they send me all over the place to you know, get engaged with the community. This is why I'm part of mm -hmm. Westchester on the Move um, and part of Rev Up. So we really try to work within the communities that our mm -hmm. campuses are located so that we can make sure sure that all our st students are served. All right. Um, now, getting back to the vote, the election coming up, mm -hmm. there's the registration deadline for October 11th, yes. and there's the early voting, beginning of early voting on October the um, 26th. Mm -hmm. um, now, registration, where do they go to do that? Well, you can register at any, um, well, uh, let me start off by saying that if you're a college student, a lot of colleges mm -hmm. are doing um, registration campaigns. Mm -hmm. So I would first say if you're a college student, 
contact your student development campus life or disability services office and and register with them okay there's a lot of um, you can even go on the website um, for New York State voting and download an application and just send that off so you don't really have to go anywhere you can just like do it at the comfort of your home mm -hmm. and the early voting opportunity which I think would probably be really to the advantage of a disabled person to go to a place um, nearby which is more handicapped accessible and they have six seven seventeen locations now mm -hmm. um, so um, is there going to be an outreach to with the Board of Elections to point out this advantage to the disabled? Well what RevUp is trying to do right now advantage. is is, is get, get that word out that people with disabilities, if you want to vote early, you can, and also give that information of those polling stations that are open um, for early access. So mm -hmm. that's one of their initiatives. Mm -hmm. And now we're coming into the final two minutes of the work pr program. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular message that you would want to deliver to viewers disabled or regular whatever about disability? Well, I would just want to say that um, we're, we're all regular and cool individuals um, with or without disabilities. Um, I, would, I would think the message should be is that um, despite having a disability, um, you could still um, pursue your dreams and aspirations if you have the desire. I think the biggest thing is knowing the resources that are available for your specific disability and understand how to um, access those resources um, to make you successful. I think mm -hmm. that people should not feel stigmatized or limiting because they quote, quote, has a label of a disability. Um, we need to empower them. So a lot of these agencies and programming is really meant to empower individuals so I just want people to feel empowered and inspired um, this is why we should vote because essentially your your voice your voice matters when you vote and also it makes you feel that you can make a difference because one one vote really can make a difference well dr. Sharon McLennan Weir director disability services Berkeley College here in White Plains and seven other locations. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much Thank for you. enlightening me and our viewers on this very important issue. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Thank you. Thank you so much.